This video is sponsored by Frag Pro Shooter. Power Rangers Time Force is a series all about the future. It's also one of the series that is most known and recognized in the Power Rangers franchise. Loved by fans and critics alike, it is definitely one of the best seasons out there, with some of the best cast and villains that we may ever have. So 20 years after its initial airing, where's the cast now? Well, let's talk about it. Yo, what's up everybody, it's Estee here and welcome back to the video and today we'll be asking the question, where are they now with the cast of Power Rangers Time Force? This is a brand new series where I'm going to be talking about the whereabouts of the cast of many different Power Rangers teams. As we know, sometimes Power Rangers actors become really big stars in Hollywood or sometimes they just fall off the face of the earth. And today we'll be analyzing the Time Force cast of Rangers because you know, the show is about the future. So I wonder where the cast is in the future, which is today, technically. Let's start with the Red Ranger of this team, Jason Font, aka Wes Collins, the Red Time Force Ranger. Now, as we know, himself and the other cast of Time Force Rangers reprised their roles from the Time Force characters in the Wild Force team up episode, Reinforcements from the Future, as well as specifically Wes and the Quantum Ranger, both returning for the Wild Force episode, Forever Red. But after Power Rangers Time Force, Jason Fawn really didn't do much. He kind of played Alexander the Great twice, like the historical figure, and like, Two different shows both in 2005 for battleground the art of war as well as in 2010 for deadliest warrior so like what's that's weird i also saw that he appeared in like this weird movie called honeymoon in paris which is basically about a group of single people in an island trying to get together but the movie's set as a reality TV show, but it's not a reality TV show. It's a movie, it's a work of fiction. It's, I don't know. The plot was very confusing in my head when I was trying to read it up on it. Regardless of all this confusing stuff in Jason Fawn's filmography, he obviously did return as Wes later on in his Power Rangers career. More specifically in 2014 during the legendary battle where he teamed up with the likes of Jason David Frank, the Megaforce Rangers and stuff like that. He also appeared in Super Ninja Steel and like a few separate occasions actually. There was of course Course, dimensions in danger and then he appeared as a hologram a few times or like this christmas special he appeared as a hooded figure wes was there but speaking of jason david frank he is actually working with him right now in legend of the white dragon so that's something to look out for because king bach Bruh. is in that movie with uh Holy this is this is the part where you laugh But before we go on, a word from our sponsor. Frag Pro Shooter is said to be one of the best shooter games of 2021, all with the mobile device in mind. With more than 80 million players and 1 million active players each day, it's always alive over on Frag. It's free to play and you guys have specific awards, all thanks to the link in the description down below. This is a super easy game to get into, but to master it, you gotta have some skill. To win, you choose from 100 characters and pick five of your liking, all with a unique gameplay with a specific role and power. My favorite is Inferno because he kind of looks like a sleep paralysis demon. I'm scared. And for a mobile game, the graphics are really good. You know, the characters have a really nice design. The maps are simple, neat, easy to look at, and just really just aesthetically pleasing for me. But once you get your team, head over to the enemy bunkers to go take them down, with you needing two bunkers destroyed in order to win. Also, feel comfortable in any playstyle you want, from switching characters in game or switching from first person to third person. You can do all that in Frag. You can also get your friends or a stranger in 2v2 mode, where you choose three characters from a deck of six, while your partner will get the other three and you fight the enemy team this game also has new content all the time including the brand new character piper reese who is a hollywood star and the host of the tournament of frag for someone who's a singer and also had orange hair in a past life i enjoy piper a lot and guess what guys all of you e squad members will be getting free rewards in this game that's right free rewards even if you have frag pro shooter already installed Click the link in the description down below, right below the like button, you can't miss it, to get your free rewards. You'll be getting an X1 golden chest, 5,000 coins, and 200 diamonds worth $10. So, what are you waiting for? Join me and the millions of other players today on Frag Pro Shooter. I even have my own club called the E-Squad. Come join, I would love to have you. I'll see you on the battlefield. Now let's move on to Michael Capon, who played Lucas, the Time Force Blue Ranger. 
Now this guy is definitely another story because he definitely went on to be doing a lot more acting roles in his career. Besides returning for the Wild Force team with the rest of the Time Force cast, he went on to star in about a few episodes or so of the WB's One Tree Hill. Some of you may also know him as Ricky from Disney's That's So Raven. He was playing a guy in a boy band called The Boys in Motion. I love this song. Boys, we are the boys in motion. Boys, we are the boys in motion. Five local better and ratio. He also had a main role in Bring It On, In It To Win It, a direct-to-DVD film sequel of the Bring It On series. Okay, I don't know, guys. I always have a feeling about direct-to-DVD movies. They're just not as good. How does that happen? You know, like, you have a film franchise that's doing good, and all of a sudden you're making direct-to-DVD releases. Who buys the DVD releases anyways? Is there an audience for that? He also had a main role on a surfing series called Beyond the Break, which used to appear on The End, which for my historian enthusiast of children's television, The End is what eventually became Teen, teen Nick on uh, Nickelodeon. But besides that, pretty chill. Minor role after minor role and whatnot. He did make his own show in 2019 called Dystopia, which actually starred Jason Font in it for an episode. So that's cool that he's making his own stuff. He also started an indie go-go in 2015 to make his own independent Power Rangers movie. But after saving up $13,000 from donators and people who wanted to support this movie, the movie never happened. So that's a weird conundrum. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give this a big old like because 1500 likes, it's a brand new series. I'm sure I wanna give you more. So hey, what's your favorite Time Force character? Let me know, press the like button, lock in your answer. But moving on, we got Deborah Estelle Phillips who played Katie, the yellow Time Force Ranger. I actually had the honor to meeting her in a Puerto Rico Comic Con a few years ago. She is very nice and very splendid. And guess what? She hasn't really done much after Time Force either. The only thing to note here is that she starred in a web series called The Kavanaugh's, which is a show about a group of friends trying to make a TV show, like a failed pilot and whatnot. It's a nice concept. She also starred in a 2010 film called The Company We Keep, which is a movie about a group of friends at a record label creating music artists. So she's in a lot of stuff about creation. That's the joke I wrote in the script. It doesn't really sound good when I say it. Then we got Kevin Kleinberg, as you know, he plays Trip, the green Time Force Ranger, the dude with the green hair. Who am I if I have the purple hair? Am I the purple Time Force Ranger? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I love how in each video you can see me slowly like moving to insanity. So it's fun to watch, it's fun to watch. But uh, yeah, he this dude really didn't do much either. In the 2000s, he was in like this thriller horror movie, something like that. That one's called Ethan Mao. And he also starred in a short film called This Town's Called Crash, which is actually written by Matt Sadowiski, who's actually the SPD Green Rangers. So, you know, hey, at least the Power Rangers stick together, especially the Green Rangers. Once you look at that, big coincidence right there. Also, if you want a Where Are They Now of the SPD Power Rangers in their cast, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to do it. Then, of course, we got Erin Cahill, which to be honest, out of all the Time Force Rangers, she is definitely one of the most popular of them all. If you don't know, she played Jen Scott. West Love, the leader of the team in Time Force, and she really has kept herself busy. And year after year, she's always at least appearing in something else, whether that be a TV show, movie, video game, voice acting, animation, anything. She was doing shows like Crossing Jordan, General Hospital, Cold Case, Supernatural, CSI Miami, The Mentalist, Castle, Ghost Whisperer, Grey's Anatomy, House, and Criminal Minds. So that's like a lot of known TV shows out there. That's crazy. But she also has some more notable roles in other shows. If you are a comedy viewer like myself, you may know How I Met Your Mother. Well, actually she played Ted Mosby's sister, as well as Kendra Burke over on Saving Grace. She also has a little recurring role as Felicity in The Red Widow, not The Black Widow. MCU joke. Okay, that's it. There is one big thing though, that she is actually one of the first ever female protagonists in a Call of Duty game. More specifically, playing Chloe Karma Lynch in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. As well as having a role in Resident Evil Vendetta back in 2017. But I'll let you know, Eren's character, Jen, is the only other Time Force character besides Wes and the Quantum Ranger, which we'll talk about in a second, to reprise their role after the main show, and of course the main team up, with Eren coming back as Jen over on Power Rangers. Hyperforce, kind of being the one that not really necessarily led, but created this new team of Rangers. If you want to see a full video about Power Rangers Hyperforce and what that is, if you don't know what that is, of course, check it out, Icon Screen. 
But I will mention right now that Aaron Cahill, as well as the other Time Force members, were supposed to appear in another Power Rangers movie called The Order, which is a Power Rangers fan film made by the actors and actresses who were in Power Rangers. But that movie never came out and we never saw the likes of them on screen again. By the way, if this is your first time watching me, hello, I'm Este, nice to meet you. Be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you join the E-Squad today and don't miss out on any single one of my Power Rangers videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to come back and enjoy them. You know, we have a good time. We talk. It's a conversation you and I have. Moving on to Dan Southworth, though, he played Eric Myers, aka the Quantum Ranger. I met him myself as well, and this dude is also really known as well, but in the video game world. You may know him as playing Virgil from the Devil May Cry series, as well as Kenshi in the web series Mortal Kombat Legacy 2, as well as working motion capture for Killzone, Shadowfall, Battlefield 4, Ninja Gaiden 3, Dark Souls 2, Resident Evil, Halo 3 Full Combat, and there's one more thing here that's actually really surprising me. He actually did help in the early visualizations of Avatar, that movie that sold billions of dollars and was basically a big commercial on 3D. I thought that was cool. Dan Salworth obviously returned as the Quantum Ranger in the Forever Red Special, but haven't reprised his role ever since. But with that being said, we are done with the Power Rangers. But we got some bonus ones because we got to talk about some villains and some other recurring characters. Like Brianne Brosi, who played Circuit, the Rangers robot of the season. And since Brianne is a voice actor, you know, they've been pretty busy throughout the years. More notably as Tommy Hemi in Digimon and Keenan Creer in Data Squad, Noaki in Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, as well as the movie Jungle Shuffle as young Manu. Now, both the characters of Mr. Collins, Edward Albert, as well as the season's villain, Rancic, that being Vernon Wells, are mostly known for stuff they did before Time Force, with Edward known for movies like Butterflies Are Free, Midway, Galaxy of Terror, and The Rescue, which all had pretty cool posters by the way. However, sadly, he did pass away in 2006, so he didn't really get to do much after that. Time Force was kind of one of his last roles in his history. But then again, we had Vernon Wells, who actually did really a lot too. He was in the original Mad Max 2, and he was in Commando with Dun 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 Dun, the Terminator himself, the governor of California, my man Arnold. But really, he's kept it low-key. Like, he had a cameo in Looney Tunes back in action, which I like that movie, by the way. A lot of people hate it, but I enjoy it. What do y'all think? Do y'all like Looney Tunes back in action? He was also the voice of Gandalf in a Lego Lord of the Rings short, as well as doing video games and stuff, like Darksiders 2. And a numerous amount of other roles. Like, he had a history already. He can just keep it down low for the rest of his life. Who's gonna know? But last but not least, we have Nadira, who is Rancic's daughter, kind of the sidekick to the villain of the way. She is played by Kate Sheldon and she has done nothing literally nothing after time force there's literally no she sh I think she quit I, I'm sorry I'm sorry guys I know it's very anticlimactic but that's literally how it ends this is how the story ends she did nothing after time force but hey what do you guys think who is your favorite actor and actress and what is your favorite role from them after Power Rangers time force let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below don't forget to follow me on Twitter Dino on Fuego I'm also on Instagram not on Fuego have a good morning evening afternoon wherever you're at and of course and as always stay awesome everybody This is, this is the part where you laugh. It's about drive. It's about power.